All right, guys, class is in. Corey Hind here. Hope you're well. I'm talking about Google Business Profile, which I tend to do a fair bit of. The reason for this course is because very frequently people come my way, and especially this year, um, they're asking me questions like, is my listing set up well? Or can you review my listing to make sure it's looking good? Can you make sure I've done the right things? So I get a mix of initial setup inquiries, you know, how to set it up from scratch. I also get a lot of people asking me to review their listing and make sure that it's good and optimized. We get clients who want us to manage their listings for them because they realize that Google Business Profile will help them get more calls and leads to their business. And sometimes we just get people who want us to review it as a one-off thing. So we do that as well. So we have a service that we do month by month but we also have a one-off fix-up, which is about a thousand bucks. So I wanted to run you through what I would do when I review one so that you can look at your own listing and you can make sure that it's all hunky-dory and looking good and stands, uh, stands uh, a good chance at ranking up the top and giving you as much business as possible. Now, when something comes my way, one of the first things I'll do is I'll go back a step and ask the fundamental question, which, and this is really important, which is, is Google Business Profile relevant for that business? Okay, because there's still confusion out there about what it's for. So it's a location-based thing. So if you run a business where you have a door that opens and closes and you serve a local area, uh, that's that's probably something you should look at in terms of, yes, Google Business Profile is useful for us. If you have a business that serves the whole planet or an online store that sells everywhere, it's probably less likely to be a major part of your marketing mix. Okay, so that's my fundamental question is, should you be doing this at all or should you not? And in some cases, if you're a small business and you've got limited resources, it might not be a thing you should be spending loads of time on. On the flip side, and far more frequently, it, it pardon me, it, it is something that people should be spending time and effort and money on because it is vastly underutilized. I talk to marketers and business owners all the time, and we are often amazed at how many people are getting leads from Google they're not sure where they're coming from and often more than half of them are actually coming from Google Business Profile. Lots of local businesses pay no attention to this whatsoever. However, if they did, they could rank higher on the front page of Google and make an impact. I'm just going to flip over to a screen, which is a search I just did before for mortgage brokers Tauranga. So I live in Tauranga and if I was to want to find a mortgage broker, I would go to Google and I'd simply type in mortgage brokers Tauranga. That's what I'd do. And this is what I would see. This is what I have just seen just now. Now, here are your top three. Below them, so there's no ads up there. These are the top three on the map pack listings. That's the Google business profiles up here. And then you've got, usually this will be the case with lots of services. This will be the case. There'll be blog articles, which have done a great job on their SEO and will rank up the top of the normal Google search, like this article here. So people are getting a bit aware. That's another blog article there. So people are aware of that. So they kind of hang around up here now. Okay, so for mortgage broker Tauranga or any other town or area, absolutely, Google business profile would be a part of that mix that you should be spending time and effort on because people go, oh, wow, we need to review our home loan. We need to get a home loan. We need to do whatever it is and they will simply click there, call that person. And sometimes they might click down here, more businesses, and they will look at the other Google business profiles as well. There's some ads up the top. We won't talk about those in this class, but they'll often go here now and, and search through the other Google business profile listings. And that is an indicator that, you know, for that type of industry, is probably something we should do. And you'll see the map pack over there on the right, just in that last bit as well, the actual map itself with the listings too, because sometimes people want somebody close by. Now, that that's a key thing you need to consider. So is this part of the mix for me or not? Now, if it is, um, I'll say, cool, yeah, it seems like 
Google Business Profile is a part of your marketing mix. It's something you should definitely spend time on. There's lots of ways people come to our business, but as time goes on, this becomes more and more important. Now, the next question I would ask is, what are your competition up to? Before I look at the listing to optimize it and the setup, etc., I'll have a look at the other people in the market and I'll just have a bit of a think about, okay, what are they doing? How's their listing looking? You know, what's um, what are the posts that they've been doing? How many reviews have they got? What details have they included? All that stuff. I will have a good look. I'll open up a Google document and I'll list out some of the key players and just make notes about why I think they're ranking up the top. Because in some industries, there will be loads and loads of businesses providing the service. And the reality is that these top three up here get pretty much all of the phone calls. I've seen it quoted that 91% of the phone calls go to these guys up the very top. So that's a very impressive number. And I think if you're one of these people, your phone's ringing off the hook. And if you're not in that top three, your phone's not ringing off the hook. Okay. Usually, after I've looked at the competition, I will do a variety of searches on that category. So I might do mortgage advisor, Todonga. I might do mortgage broker near me. I might do mortgage advice, Bay of Plenty. I'll just use some basic obvious searches just to get more of a feel for who's around and what they're doing. Okay, I'm just going to move this over here. So once I've answered that critical question of, is this something we should be spending time, money, effort on, because we know that that makes our phone ring and clients come to our website and our business, I'll come to their Google Business Profile Manager. Now, I've obviously set this up a long time ago, so I won't go through a new setup, but if you were to start from fresh, you can still take this advice and apply it because the setup process is pretty intuitive from Google. They put it together really nicely and they walk you through step by step. But if it was me, I would then review the account. Okay, so I would start here with the home button. So this is your menu down the side. This is really important. And in the middle is, is the guts of it. So we need to keep an eye on that as well. So I'll look at the home button and I will just have a scroll around. Sometimes there'll be little blue call to actions that you might need to do. And sometimes they're all done, sometimes they're not. And they'll change from time to time. But when I'm reviewing a, an account initially, performance down here is always quite interesting. Probably the most relevant part of that is actual activity. Now, my business serves locally, but also I have clients in multiple countries and all through New Zealand. So Google My Business isn't necessarily a big um, part of my own mix for new clients because I can't get a Christchurch client from here in Tauranga because Google Business Profile is location-based. So if someone searches SEO consultant or Google Business Profile consultant from Christchurch, my listing won't appear. So that's why we go back to that fundamental question at the start of, should we be working on this or not? But this activity button is really interesting. So it tells me how many people in the last, this should be the last 28 days, yep. How many people have gone to my website? How many people have called me? Photo views, etc. So we look at this stuff to see, okay, how active are we at the moment? This will also tell us our latest reviews. Now I've got lots of, lots of reviews over the years. So that's um, going to appear there. There's another review button down here. There is the latest post. I like to try and keep that quite up to date. Share your review form. Uh, this is if you want to add somebody to your account to help you manage it. This is if you want to look at how it looks on search and maps, which is coming up more and more. So people, if we click on there, people will look at Google Maps and they'll see your business appear on Google Maps as well because it's, again, a physical location based. And it actually show you, this is what it looks like on maps. It's, it's where I live, okay? That's me with a dodgy moustache. And it'll show us how we appear on the maps listing as well. And then also on search, you can click that and it'll show you how you look on search as well. 
So it's important just to look at all of this stuff to see what it looks like at the start. So that's how it pops up on the side there. Okay. Funny, that's my neighbor's car. <laughs> so it, it'll come up and show you there's your phone number, blah, blah, blah. And then this is normal Google search as well. So it's always interesting to click on those tabs and have a look around. So I'll always do that when I'm reviewing an account at the start, just to see how it looks to customers. Because at the end of the day, the end result I want is to elevate the listing so it appears in front of customers and then they click on it and get in touch with our business. That's the goal. So this home button is kind of your little home for your Google business profile. And with my clients, I'll visit this home button every second day typically to make sure, for example, last week, this one up the top has popped up, this keep customers up to date. So you need to click there and walk through some questions to keep that up to date. Now I've done that already and it's a little bit glitchy. So it's still appearing even though we've done it and we've done it for our clients as well. So because Google Business Profile is an ever-changing platform, it does glitch a little bit at times and there's nothing to be worried about. Now, when I look at an account to optimize it, the next thing I'll do after I've just had a look around here, going back one step, I always, always look at the name of the listing. It's really important. You can pop the location in there if you want to, been a bit controversial over the years as to whether that's okay but Google's recommendations are that you use the exact name for the business however they're not having it as a hard and fast rule that is um, penalized if you alter it slightly you can't spam the name I've talked about this at length before if you watch my videos you can't just say Corey Hines marketer marketing SEO Google my business blah 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 but Corey Hind, good oil marketing total that's a natural flowing non-spammy name it's a description of who I am, what I do, and where I am. And that's what this platform is based on. Who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Okay, so that's in line with Google's recommendations. And none of the alterations I've done for clients over the last three years have ever been penalized. So at the moment, we're pretty happy with our advice on that. I will then go to info. That's my next port of call. So this is a very important button on your listing because when you set up your listing, there's lots of opportunities to get this right. Okay, so these over here are your little edit buttons. So we, we click on those if we want to make a change. So that's the name of the listing. So that's what people will see up the top. So that's a very important little spot. Now down here is your category. So that's important because if you look over here at the mortgage brokers, and I did a search before for fitness trainers total as well, you need to have that in line with what you do. So you'll know what your business is and it'll suggest or you can just go through and get that right. But if you click on that button there, it'll give you the primary category, additional categories, you can add more categories. That primary category is the major thing you need to get right because they will send people your way primarily based on that. Because when it was first set up, Google My Business, or whatever it was called before that, now called Google Business Profile, your name might have been Corey Hind Limited, which doesn't really tell us much about anything. So they refer down to the business category that you are as a key place to go. Okay. Now your address that is needed. And when you set up, there's a verification process where they send you a postcard. You can hide your address if you want to. Now this next one, service areas, I've just got listed as New Zealand because I serve all of New Zealand, but all of the world. For many of my local clients who might be, now I don't have a mortgage broker in Tauranga as a client, but if I did, I would list out the key suburbs of Tauranga in that area. Okay, so it's important to start where you are, go a bit broader. Now, let's say you're a real estate agent in Wellington. You might start with the suburb where you're located and then go out about 10 kilometers around because you'd happily take on listings in that area. So service areas is an important thing to, to use and pop in the suburbs where you are and nearby. With the hours, I've got myself as 24 hours because I'm an online business at the end of the day. People can buy my courses anytime. They can message my page. They can text message me, call me, email me anytime. And worst case scenario is I'll get back to them the next day. 
because I don't have a business where the door opens and closes, that's what I can do. If your business does have open and closing times and you're a shop, for example, that needs to be spot on because there's nothing worse than people rocking up to your business and you're not there. Okay, that, that brasses people off. If you're a builder, for example, I would put these hours as times you're happy to be on the phone. So you might have 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. Because if somebody ring you at 8 o'clock at night about a very high-end house build with lots of money to your business, I'm sure you'd be happy to take that call. We've tested this and I think the broader the hours, the better. Because if someone does a search at a certain time, we don't want to miss that potential lead. Okay, through here is some pretty basic stuff. Obviously, your website link. You want that. You want Google to be sending people to your website. That's critical. You should also have an, a different appointment link as well. It's another opportunity for Google to send traffic to your site. It's a, a more enriched way of using the platform. Generally, with a Google thing like Google Business Profile, the more fully you can complete this, the better. So I always try and have a different appointment link, not just the normal website, but a, a link where they can contact you and book something in. Now, products is something that you can use if you sell products. I have some courses I probably should list in there as well. Some of my Gumroad courses, I should probably list those in there. If you've got a Shopify store or an e-store of any e-commerce business of any style, or even a shop that sells a particular thing that's really popular, you should list that there. Okay, so you can click on there and it'll walk you through the process of uploading a product. There you go. I've actually got a couple there. So that's an important thing to do. And then you've got services. Now, this changes all the time. So Google is often updating this. Like sometimes this will happen twice a week for my clients. So I visit these often and make sure that the services I offer match what I do. Now, there's a little trick that a lot of people are not aware of. So if you pop into here, just click on that box and it'll take you to the different services that you've got. There is an opportunity to fill out more information here. So I've filled out these top ones. For example, I have not filled out email marketing. So I can click on the email marketing button and I can describe the service. You know, get more customers, upsell, re-engage with lost inquiries people who were researching now ready to buy, all that sort of stuff. You can pop that in the service description because it's just another opportunity, another bit of hardware, another little asset you can use. And if you fill that out, that helps. Okay, so please do that as well. Now, if I just go back another step, working down the page, all of these things, if they apply, get in there and complete them. So sometimes Google wants us to update our health and safety because of COVID or whatever. Sometimes they want us to update services. So we need to click on that often and make sure that it's up to date and we've completed it as fully as we can. This one here can't be missed. This is essentially a business description. So you can complete this and write whatever you like. Obviously, you want it to be descriptive. You've got 750 and I've almost maxed that out. So you want it to be descriptive. You want to make sure that it talks about the customer. You want to make sure it talks about the benefit you provide. You want to talk about them and the outcome they'll get from doing business with you. I'll be updating mine soon. I like to test it every month or so and change it, tweak it, see what happens. My listing has been up the top for SEO Todonga for quite some time. And it's not really a huge source of business for me. However, I test it and tweak it because it's part of my research. So when I go to a customer's site, I can use that learning to apply to them. Okay. So, and that'll turn up in when people find you online, either on the phone or desktop, they'll see that quite easily. So make sure it's snappy to the point and descriptive and helpful. Okay. Now this one here, the date, that should be correct. The older, the better. So if you've been doing business for a long time, just make sure that date's on point and make sure it's filled out as well. Okay, really important stuff. Now, once I've gone through the info, I'll then usually go down to the reviews and just see what's in there because once we've optimized a site for our clients, getting reviews or helping them get reviews is an important part of what we do. Okay, so 
we generally generally look at their reviews, we make sure they've been replied to, we make sure that they've been getting them regularly, we make sure they've got some. Um, sometimes businesses come our way and they have no reviews, they've just never thought to push for it. Uh, we wrote an article recently which has 13 ways to get reviews. There's all sorts of cool ways you can get reviews. I encourage people to go back and talk to customers to see how it went with the service or product they bought, ask for some feedback, anything negative, come back to me, we can talk about it, anything positive, hey, how about a Google review? It should be part of how you run your business, which is always talking to people, giving feedback and making sure that you're getting Google reviews because over time, what it does is it not only pushes your ranking up, it also helps people to make a purchasing decision with you. So if we look back at mortgage brokers in Tauranga, you'll notice that the top three have all got quite a few reviews. So 21, 64, and 63. So if I was to want to get a mortgage broker in Tauranga, I'd look at these and I'd go, okay, five stars. So they've all been five star reviews. That's awesome. This one's got 64. I'd probably ring all three of those and have a quick conversation on the phone run my situation past them, see who I, who I connected with. But these listings are all good and the reviews definitely help me to go, oh, okay, these people are really good. If you click on more businesses, and I can't remember if there's any down here, but let's just have a quick look. If you didn't have many reviews or your average was really low, like a 3.5 out of 5 average review, I don't think it's going to help people click through. So with this industry, people tend only to go on and leave reviews if they're happy, and that's cool. But people do look at the negative reviews as well. So this one here, you know, 3.7, I'll definitely look at that. So keep in mind that reviews are an important part of the mix, unequivocally proven that getting good reviews is part of the mix, but it's not just elevating your ranking to get more position and calls, it's also to help people click on your listing at the end of the day because people believe Google reviews. They really understand now that testimonials on websites can be fudged. I've seen lots of real estate agents using other software to get reviews and I don't necessarily love that idea because people have demonstrated and research now shows that Google reviews are the most trusted reviews. If you've ever had a negative review you've tried to get removed, you know how hard that is. And it kind of proves the robustness of the system. So there's a great deal of trust in Google reviews. So I encourage, we always look at that review game, see how they've been going. Now, the next thing I'll look at, messaging I won't normally look at, but I'll encourage people to activate that and usually get the app on their phone as well so that they can reply to any messages because people are now messaging businesses directly. I will look at the photos to see that they've got some photos. It's a really useful way to upgrade a listing. When we start a new listing for a client, sorry, when we take on a new listing, we will often go to their website and Facebook and download all of the photos that they've got. And then over the next week or two, we'll upload them to the photos section here because A, we know that it works. So therefore we do it, obviously, but B, it's actually good for customers to go to your listing, have a look around. If it's a visual business, like I have a kitchen business that I do this for, the photos are really important because people want to scroll around the listing, have a look at the work that they've done and go, wow, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Wow, this guy's good. So photos are really, really important. We've talked about products. We've talked about services. The website is something you should definitely activate okay so when you first go to your listing if you haven't activated that website it won't be you won't be able to see it as a separate website so there'll be a button to say uh, make it live I think it says but if you look at what it presents as as its own website in terms of SEO we want people pointing at our website so a Google business profile website within Google that points at our own website is really, really important. And this is what mine actually looks like. And it's pretty, it's pretty cool actually, because look, it's got contact us, make appointment, call now, pretty obvious stuff. At the end of the day, we want calls to action that are obvious. So contact us, 
It's got some images. It's got our most recent posts. So this is the post turn up. And these links go straight from Google to my course, my website, my Twitter account, my LinkedIn. It's, it's really useful to use. So we always recommend that people get that site live. And all it really does is it's, it's building a website for you using your existing collateral on the Google business profile. So every time you do a post, it turns up in that, in that listing as a mini blog post. So we always get people to do it. We don't usually bother with buying the, the new domain. We just let that run because, you know, when we talk about SEO as a, the old school, normal organic listings, backlinks are really important and the higher authority the better and this is straight from google so that's super super high importance all right then once we have had a good look around the listing and we've completed all of that stuff we've chased up some reviews we've uploaded some photos we've done all the info as deeply as we can and that might take a few days of work that might take a few hours of work it depends on what you've already got depends on where you think the wins can be compared to your competitors and it's worth it because getting higher up google if you can get that top three for your business that can be a huge influx of phone calls okay so it's really worthwhile the the next thing we'll do is we'll go okay what do we do now we've optimized the listing now we need to keep working on it to get it to continually rank higher. Now, Google has designed this product, Google Business Profile, as, a, as an active tool. Okay, it's something that we need to actively use all the time to get rewarded with the high rankings and the free leads. Okay, so I'll repeat that. Active. We need to continually act on this to rank up the top and get free calls, etc. So usually we will visit our clients, our listings for our clients each week, two, three or four times. We test out different frequencies to see how it goes. In the end, we, we always get our clients into the top of their game. Sometimes it takes a few months. Sometimes it takes a few weeks. Six months, worst case scenario, if you continually apply work. Now what that work looks like is there's a few things we do. Thing one, we come back to the listing and we have a look around. Simply that. So we'll look at anything that needs doing, like this Get Started button has popped up. We'll look at that. We'll look at, sometimes there'll be a little orange thing saying accept all changes to services. So we'll accept those and then go back into services and make sure that they're still relevant and maybe change our descriptions or upgrade our descriptions. So we'll just look at the listing generally to see if there's anything that's popping up that needs doing. Then we will think about our review system. Have we emailed all of the clients from the last week in our business, for example, to ask for feedback and our review? So that is something that we send out emails to our clients to say, here's a new script of an email we've written. Try this with your clients. It might be as simple as, how is that thing you bought? The end. And then PS, if you're happy, please leave us a review. Just a way to engage with people and get reviews. But the main thing that we do for our clients every second or third day is we go to posts and we pop something in the posts. This is a really important feature. That's why it's up the very top underneath home. Okay, so that gives us the indication that this is a really important place on this listing so we go to posts and we do something now there's a blue button here that'll give you the option of which sort of post you want to do but for example here's my last one which was a few days ago which now just have a look at what i've done with this one because it's, it's interesting i've usually got a few links in there now i don't get heaps of views on this listing but some's better than none I'll usually have a link there to my YouTube channel because I want people to find my YouTube videos as well. I'll have a link to a course. And then in this one, I've got a link to another course as well. So I usually use, I use emojis to help things stand out. And I use links as well. Now, if we go down a bit further, this one was just more of a, a general awareness one. There's some links to Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, 
and an article I'd written. So this article here is how to add or claim your business profile if you're starting from fresh with, with Google. So that's sending traffic back to my own blog. This one here has got a photo, an image, and you can, you can do a variety of posts. So if you click on the button, it'll give you these options. Now we've been testing this COVID-19 update because it seems, well, it does get more eyeballs on it. It just, it's just how it works. It doesn't give you a photo option though. So if you go to what's new as your standard method, then you can upload a photo or a video. You can do both. You can upload multiple. And then you've got the meat and potatoes down here. So you insert your text down there and you should always have a call to action button as well. I like call now simply because for my clients, I'm trying to increase the number of phone calls that they get directly to their business. And I can demonstrate to them that we put in this much work and you got this many phone calls. And let's say you converted half of those to, to sales, then we can uh, provide a nice little bit of data about how effective that marketing campaign has been. So that's really what we do. Once we've set up that listing, we've optimized all the different bits we can. We've thought about how we're going to harness reviews. In a normal week, we'll upload a post for our clients, usually two or three times. Sometimes we'll also add more photos. I ask my clients regularly to send me a Dropbox file or just any files they've got of anything related to their business and I'll upload those photos as well. Any new products or key products they want to push, we'll pop that in there. Services, we look at all the time, okay? And that's kind of how we optimize a listing. It's once you've done the work to set it up, you've looked at your competition, Really, the magic trick that we've found that gets the result is just being consistent. Okay, so coming back to the listing every second or third day and being consistent. If you run a business that's going to get lots of inquiries, if it was a mortgage broker or a real estate agent or a business where people might find some information and want to touch base with you, we would also get the Google My Business app on your phone. Okay, it's still called the Google My Business app. Get that on your phone that helps you to reply to any questions because people can message your business with a question. It gives you information about reviews that have come through so you can reply to the reviews instantly. And at the end of the day, it lets us do everything faster because online, if you're not there quickly, people will go elsewhere. And that's not what we want. We want to keep them talking to us, engaging with us and having a conversation that leads to some business down the line. All right. So that is the half an hour class. Hopefully that's been quite valuable for you. What you can do next if you want to is you can track me down and ask me any questions, email me or message me and I will reply to those. If you want myself and the team to look at your listing, you can book in a listing fix up with us or you can ask us about taking your listing over and managing that for you because it is such an effective way to grow your business, the appearance on Google and the leads and calls you get. But don't forget that fundamental question from the start, which was, is this the right platform for me to work on? Because some businesses, it's really important and for some, not so important. All right. Okay, that's, that's it for now. We will talk at some point in the future and good luck in business. Bye guys, have a nice day.